Hey guys, what's up? I'm Mark and in this channel, I talk a little bit about lifestyle and most especially, I cover a lot about the Airbnb business. One of my first videos on being an Airbnb host was about selecting the right condominium property that would be likely to allow you to do short-term hosting or Airbnb. Now, I released this video sometime in October 2021. During this time, the pandemic was still in mid-groove Many of the places were still not allowing Airbnb. So now, in November 2022, I think it's about time to update this video. So if you've watched that previous video, I shared with you a rating that I gave to condominium developers at the rating of 1. It's highly unlikely that you are able to monetize your investment via Airbnb. And at the end of the scale, with the rating of 10, you're most likely not going to encounter any problems in trying to run your home as an Airbnb. So yes, these ratings are just probabilities. It doesn't necessarily assure you a yes or a no because a lot of these condominium developers do have changing rules, sometimes have some leeway, and sometimes you can just get away with it. <laughs> You're probably watching this because you want to buy a property for Airbnb. So without further ado, let's go. But hold on, hold on. Before I start giving my rating, I wanted to let you know that I am not a real estate broker. I'm not affiliated with any of the companies whatsoever, so I'm not tipping the scale of this video for one developer over another. You are assured that this is impartial and really just based on my experience, my research, talking to people, the guards, and the lobbies as I prospect further into running more Airbnbs. Alright, so let's get into it. Let's start with the rating of 1. For the rating of 1, we have here Ayala Land Premier, Rockwell Land, and Alveo also by Ayala Land. So this is just the same as in my previous video. They don't want short-term guests anywhere near their buildings. So if you bought a property from these guys, it's a good investment. You can probably monetize it, but just not by Airbnb. So let's move on. Let's jump to the rating of 3. So with the rating of 3, we have a mover here. This developer had a rating of 5 in my video last year. But since they've changed their regulations, I've asked around, I've talked to brokers. I'm sad to say that Federal Land from the George D Group no longer is allowing Airbnbs. Aww. I was actually expecting this because it seemed more aligned to their branding. So strictly speaking, they don't allow it, but I'm still giving it a rating of 3 because they used to allow it and they were actually nice to deal with. So maybe there's some hope that they'll allow it again in the future. I don't know, but I felt like they didn't deserve a rating of 1. Moving on to the rating of 4, we have two developers here, also non-movers. We have here Avida, also by Ayala Land, and Robinson's Land Corporation. As with last year's video, Avida and RLC actually do not allow Airbnb in their place. But for some reason, I do come across them when I'm doing my research for possible Airbnbs that I would be staying in. Even if they are, again, strictly not allowing it. For some reason, some people are able to get away with it. So I guess there may be some loopholes, perhaps covertly, or maybe just finding a wiggle room that you can work out with the building admin. So let's jump to the rating of 5. This developer used to have a rating of 6 in my video last year. I've actually talked to some hosts and they say that it's no longer allowed in their condominiums. But again, I do still come across them. I'm giving them a rating of 5, slightly higher than Avida and Robinson's Land Corporation because I feel like they may be more flexible with this because I do still come across them. And with a drop from the rating of 6 to 5, we have the MCI. So let's move on. With the rating of 6, we have two developers here. The first one I failed to mention last time. They are quite a popular developer, but I don't see them as aggressively expanding lately. But I do come across them, especially for their Tagaytay property. I actually don't see them a lot in Metro Manila in terms of Airbnb. But my gut feel is that they will be quite permitting of Airbnb. I just don't have a first-hand experience with them quite yet. For the rating of 6, the first developer we have here is Cityland. And our second condominium developer at the rating of 6 is again another dropper. You guys might be surprised to hear this. This condominium developer used to have a rating of 7 when I did the video last year. Some things have changed. So at rating 6, we have here no less than the very popular Mega World. 
Well, it's not that Mega World is already forbidding Airbnbs. In fact, I'm still managing a Mega World property, but I've given them a drop in rating because I actually spoke to one of their properties here in BJC, and I think the newer, higher end developments of Mega World are actually considering facing Airbnb out. So I spoke to one of these BGC properties owned by Mega World. The front desk concierge actually said that it's being phased out, that it's going to be only until the rest of the year. Now, I don't know if this will be surely implemented, but for me, if there is a direction that there is a likeliness that a unit or a building may be shut down from allowing Airbnb, then I think it merited the drop from 7 to 6. The good news is a lot of Mega World properties still allow Airbnb, especially if you own or are planning to own one in the mid-tier level. But it's not as easy anymore before where I was confident to say that as long as it's Mega World, they will allow Airbnb. Moving on to the rating of 7, we have here two developers. We have one climber here. This development company used to have a rating of 6. I've spoken to new property owners and were told by their sales agent that Airbnb is really allowed. They've verified, validated with the admin. So this developer, previously in the rating of 6, is Vistaland. Hopefully, Vistaland does maintain their openness to running their properties as Airbnbs. They have quite a number of developments all over. So it's very welcome news for property owners that Vistaland is continuing to allow short-term guests. And the other condominium developer, at the rating of 7, I actually forgot to include them in my list last year. But since they're quite open, especially with their property in Bigutan, it's known to many as the man-made beach in the city. So Azure from Century Properties is known to really allow Airbnb. I couldn't give them a full rating of 8 because I actually spoke to one of their properties before for Aqua and I didn't get the impression that they were quite accepting of it. It seemed a little 50-50 when I spoke to them years ago. So yes, for the rating of 7, we have Vista Land and Century Properties. So lastly is the rating of 8. Yes, I'm not going to be able to give anyone a 9 or a 10. I feel that it's too aggressive or too sure that Airbnb will always be allowed. So for the rating of 8, again, we have two developers here. The first one, as I mentioned before, was the only one with the rating of 8. So this is New San Jose Builders. Again, I wasn't sure if I was going to include this in my previous video because they're not as popular or maybe they don't have as much projects as most of the developers on this list. But since they are quite accommodating, they do have a few prime developments that would probably be of consideration to you guys. They are quite supportive. They've been flexible on how you can run your place as an Airbnb even during the pandemic. And the second developer, with this rating of 8, you're probably expecting this already. This developer used to have a rating of 6, but I felt like it deserved a push to a higher rating because it seems that they are very, very supportive now of Airbnb. They have quite a few regulations on how they ask their homeowners to run their Airbnb. They have a lot of rules in place and penalties that they charge for broken rules. They are able to monetize it. But I guess from that monetization, they have more incentive to allow and just really look into it. I think it's part of their whole operations. So the last on this list with the rating of 8 would be SM Development Corporation. Again, this is my own personal opinion. I'm neither really encouraging nor discouraging you. Airbnb is just one way to monetize your investment. So the developers lower on the list seem to dislike Airbnb because it seems to put a bad image or a lower branding for their place. Um, whether this will actually translate, we don't know. Um, branding and escalation of value of their properties is the name of the game for them and that's fair. But I don't think it's a necessarily foolproof strategy. What matters to me is if the unit is able to pay for itself. So as to which property to buy, I leave it up to you. Again, there are properties that you can buy based on the brand and there are properties that you can buy based on how you're able to easily monetize them. So do you agree with these ratings? If you are an Airbnb host or have an experience, let me know in the comment section. Maybe I've missed the mark on some of these. If you are a prospective investor and you want to have a place that will be run as an Airbnb but don't have the time, you can click on this link or the one in the description section. Maybe we can partner up as I actually offer my services to run your place as an Airbnb. If you've liked this video, please don't forget to like, comment, and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Thanks again for watching guys and happy Airbnb hosting.